Greg Barrett, come and join me, would you? What a, why don't you give Greg a hand as he comes? Greg, come and, come and join me. I saw before the program, I saw your two wonderful, beautiful sons. I said to them, you guys don't like summer. You want to go back to school. <laughs> they looked at me like, no, we don't. What's wrong with this guy? We were like, summer, come on. And God's given you a, a lovely wife and a good life. And he's intervened. You're a businessman and you're the executive pastor. So what you do is you do business 50 hours a week and then you do the ministry 50 hours a week. Um, tell us about business in you. What's in your mind when you're doing business? I mean, and we didn't rehearse this. I said, I'm not going to talk to you. But what are some of the goals you want to have happen by faith when you make your half million a year? Did you hear me? Yes, I heard you. Did I underrate you right there? Was that an underrate a little bit? Uh, just a little bit. Oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Tell us, tell us in your heart when it comes to business, the king side. Because the Bible says there's kings and priests. That's correct. And people don't understand that the kings go to war. And some of you priests right now, don't be afraid of the business people in your church. I'm not afraid of nothing. We'll just get another one. Hallelujah. What, do you remember when, when Saul decided he didn't need a priest anymore? It didn't go real good. He wasn't the king anymore. And we don't understand. We need priests praying for us, men of God, women of God praying for us. When you go to war in business, tell us your objective. Just flat out, just tell us what, what are you trying to accomplish in business? Well, first off, the Bible says in, in Revelation uh, 3 and 8 that says, God puts before you a door that no man can shut. Good. And so every appointment is divine, whether they realize it or not. So when I sit in front of a, a business person, and God started me off with, with you know, the, the, I'm in real estate, the first time home buyer, the, the person that had a $100,000 home, and I was faithful with the little. Yeah. And so a lot of times, especially getting out of a failing market, there was a time where I had 70 listings on the market. People were losing their homes in a failing market. That was a full-time ministry for me. Interesting. So it wasn't a money motivation. And in fact, business for me is not a money motivation. It's service-oriented. And so I believe, and the Bible says that if you serve with excellence, God will put you in front of a king instead of a common man. Now, God wants us to help the common man, but God will also give you influence with influential people. And God is saying not just a king, a leader. He's talking a moneymaker. He's talking somebody who is considered powerful. So God has put me in front of these men, not just to serve them in business, but also to give them a prophetic word for their life and provide for them a door and an opportunity Beautiful. into the kingdom. Beautiful. And really? so it's, it's never been a money motivation. I, I believe that you can run an honest business based on integrity. It's in, and people will come to me and say, well, well, Greg, what are the words that I say to, to try and get that paycheck? And, and, and how do I do this? And how do I do that? It's not about the money. The fruit of the business, yeah, is the money. But it's a service-oriented business. Yeah. There's real people, wealthy people that are dying on, on the vine because sometimes they're dysfunctional in relationships where husbands and wives can be extremely successful, but they're so dysfunctional with one another that 100% of their focus is going out and making money. They do that well, but can they come back together at home and have a conversation with one another? Can they love one another? Do they love their kids? Yeah. And, and, and I think that's ultimately where it's at. They need a word from God. This doesn't sound spiritual, but it's very, very sp spiritual. I, 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 I'm entertained by the preachers. Oh, money doesn't matter to me. I don't care about money. We just want to serve God. You crazy? Are you crazy, man? You got to turn the lights on. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to have teams and staff. Money is, is the lifeline to allow ministry to flow. I'm not boasting, but I'm on television twice a week in our city. We've been every day in Norway. We, we are true friends of TBN, but it doesn't happen for free. It happens to money. So when you look at money, we're going to talk about the three kinds of giving. We're going to talk the tithe, the offering, and the alms. We're going to take a moment to do that. But how important is it for you as a king to finance Life Change Church, just in the natural, and you're the executive pastor, so you, you're part of the, the outcome of the success of the church. How important is it to you? It's, it's extremely important. And the interesting thing is I came to the kingdom of God, sitting on the back row of a church, former Marine, and making about $6.40 an hour. Uh, on my resume, I was completely disqualified from everything. Hmm. And I think what qualifies anybody is not their resume, but a willing heart. 
And so when men of God like you would come into the church yeah. and give out words for prophetic increase in their lives, I said, God, I said, if you do it in my life, I'll, I'll build your house. And so it was a covenant that I created Great. way back when, when I was at $6.40 an hour. And people think, well, you make $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 a month. It must be easy to write the tithe. No. The more increase you have on your life, the more responsibility that you actually have. So it never changes. And so if somebody comes up short, I believe God. I said, God, I'll write the check. Yeah. But God has blessed my life. And God continues. It's, it's not a yin and a yang. And it's not, you know, you, you hit a, a pinnacle and you go back down. It's a consistent going up. Because we don't operate in the time of man. We operate in the seasons of, seasons of God. Good. So our seasons of God have been appointed. And so it's something that we have to understand what season that we're in. We have to be in the right harvest field and, and not somebody else's and understand where God wants to take us. So the, the finances of the church are extremely important. Yeah. And some people say, well, it's carnal. Or some people say, well, I've given to a church and they went off and did this. Your offering is before God. Right. It's not for man. Yeah. So in your offering is about your heart issue. God is trying to get something in you, not from you. And he wants your heart. But the Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So God wants your treasure. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to get in the game with God, God wants, wants you to get some skin in the game. All right. Here we go. No, so, I understand that. Yeah. There are three kinds of giving. And you need to hear this from TBN. Your tithe belongs to your church. There's no problem with that. TBN doesn't want money belonging to something else. But offerings is when God speaks to you and tells you, I want you to be a game changer. And TBN has been a game changer in the Northwest. Let's just get real. Now, we live in Spokane, but we have the least amount of people in the United States going to church in the Northwest. TBN is a game changer. Listen to me. We have had the highest incomes in the greater Seattle, King County, and the highest suicide. TBN is a game changer. We've had people make millions of dollars and the highest divorce rate. Jesus is a game changer. That you can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have peace at night, if you don't know your sins are forgiven, you're going to be tortured. You are a bad Marine. I mean, you're a bad, bad. Greg told me once, there could be someone with a gun. He didn't, he don't have a weapon. He said, oh, I can take it from him. I said, you can take it from him. He said, guaranteed pastor. I said, well, I got a lot of guys coming to the church who don't like my sermon, so I might call you on that one. All right. I might call you sometime. But here you are in the back row of the church. We're over in um, Rat City. That's right. People locally know that it's yeah. about. You're, you're, you're in the hood in Rat City. I never went to the church once where there wasn't some kind of police activity, ever, once. Uh, even the girls had their heads shaved with tattoos. I mean, the place was wild. It was crazy. But it was God-fearing. It was. It loved Jesus. It wanted to do its right. And out of that impossible place, because the word went forth, people became literally kings out of that place. At what point, you, you shared with me once, I came and I guess I had a prophetic word something. And here you are, six hours an hour, but something happened inside of you. Tell us what happened. How did this dream get inside of you when the evidence said, no way? God gave me a, a word when, um, when I got saved. And, and I had an, an experience. Yeah. And I think that's key, is, is, is having an experience with God. And I was called to the ministry in a grocery store, out of all places. And I was raised Catholic, so it violated my doctrine. Yeah. So it's like, well, this stuff is not supposed to happen. And, and so, so I ended up getting called out of there. And then God started speaking to me about uh, running businesses. And it's funny when God gives you a vision, he gives you the desire and the hunger to pursue something. You actually, right when I got called, came to the church. You gave yeah. me a prophetic word. Um, and some people don't know what that means. And so let's just help to set the stage. So the Spirit of the Lord is on me. Vince shot. He, he can hardly remember the grocery Run, list. Running across went, chairs, too. But. Okay, running across chairs. Vince Shaw can hardly remember the grocery list my wife gave me. And, and then I'm going to get yelled at at home for forgetting what I was supposed to get because I got Cocoa Puffs and, and I got Lucky Charms because it looked good and I was hungry, all right? But a prophetic word is when God uses a vessel, not because that vessel is anything, but uses that vessel to talk and speak about what God's future is. And it's interesting about prophetic word, if I get, the word is already in you. 
When right. a prophetic word comes, what it does, it reminds or it consummates or it strengthens what you know to be true. So here I am and we're, we're you told me this years later, I didn't even know I did it. God used me and what ignited inside of you? You prophesied over me that not only I was called to the ministry, you prophesied great wealth. Uh, you actually prophesied real estate. Um, you said you will be in real estate. You're going to build a team. You're going to do all. And it was a very specific word. And this was almost 20 years ago, by the wow. way. Wow. So it was a word that I held on to. And but you gave me a word of knowledge first. You told me about a conversation I had in a car before I even got there. And I was raised Catholic. I was like, how does this guy is, is my car wired? What's what's going <laughs> That's on? That's funny. That's really funny. You know, and yeah. so it, it, it wasn't it wasn't uh, normal for me. Yeah. And but I knew if he could tell me the conversation I had, and you rebuked me because apparently I said something I shouldn't have in the car, um, and you got my attention. So all of a sudden, then I was open to receive. I said, this can only be God. And so you gave me the prophetic word, but it wasn't until I said, if this is God, then this door will open. And seven years later, the door opened for real estate, and I started flipping properties. Yeah. And But with the return of the investments and the return of the money, I went to God and I got into covenant with God and I said, what else? Because we can sit there and we can take that paycheck and we can go spend it on whatever. But I understood that God was in partnership with me and there was a need for the money that I was generating. But God, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? And, and so what happened is increase came on my life and it didn't come overnight. Um, there, was, there was character development that had to be gotten through. God does not pour oil in a jar that has cracks in it. He's excessive, but he's not wasteful. So you were a jerk. Yeah. That's, okay, that's so we right. just, I just want to get everybody arms right now. We're all, we're all spiritual. We're listening. You're doing phenomenal sharing. Well, oh, he's so God. No, you jerk. We're all jerks, aren't we? We're just jerks together. Hallelujah. Yeah. How many are thankful that God uses jerks? Yeah. Hallelujah. You know what I love about God using a jerk? He jerks us the right way. Hallelujah. I'm having fun with you. You know, I'd do anything yeah. for you and I love you. But right then, you said something that jumped inside of me. You get this word and then you said seven years later. It's a horrible word. Seven years later, you get this word from God, and seven years later, things begin to pop. And you said, not real quickly, like, you know, seven years is like eternity. That in seven years, I mean, we're going to go back to the shag haircuts. I mean, it's forever seven years. But there was a process that God had to break you to make you. Did you have some dark times? Absolutely. And in, in seven years wasn't half of it. The other word you gave me, you said, you're called in the ministry. It'll take many years for you to walk in the fullness of your calling. Interesting. And I said, okay, God, how many is many to you? Because I'm like, you know, going to live 120 or Yeah, right, that's what we think. So it took uh, another 16 years before God spoke to me about being an, an executive pastor. Wow. So seven years to walk in business, 16 years to get where I'm at. I would have paid the price all over again. And, and the lesson learned, especially former Marine, was humility. And I think you called me about three separate times in a year and be more humble. And I said, well, God, I said, it's nice that you're talking to Pastor Vince about my humility and you guys are having a conversation, okay. but apparently I'm out of this thing. Yeah. So I kept going back to God because every time you get on speaker, hey, hey uh, Greg, where you at? And I'm right here, Pastor. I'll be more humble. And I'm like, what the heck are you guys talking about that I'm not involved in this conversation? God speaks to me and he finally lets me in on a little secret. He said, anybody can give me alms and give me their weakness. He said, but can you give me your gifts and your strengths? Good word. And he says, if you can give me your strength and out of your strength, he said, your weaknesses will follow. He says, I want your strengths and I want your entire heart. And I don't want you to have filters as self-defense mechanisms to keep things out to protect yourself. So God says, if I can have all of you. Beautiful then I can pour the fullness of me in your heart. And God doesn't want anybody withholding. He said to me a couple of weeks when I was praying over the church, he said, resist not my spirit. Hmm. And he's saying, I'm trying to get something into them, but they have filters in their heart where they're keeping me out right now. And God has in mind of increase for people, but there's certain areas in our hearts we hold back. So when somebody takes an offering, and all of a sudden this offense comes back or they're reminded about a bad experience, they immediately build the wall and they shut off. Yeah. And God has in mind for them increase, but it takes a seed to open a door. And so God wants to open doors in people's lives, but they can't hear because they created that protection mechanism to keep God out. What is God saying to you? Not, not Greg Barrett, or 
Pastor Vince Schott, what is God saying to you? Has God been speaking to you directly to your heart? And you have a filter. And he's saying, I want you to sow a seed into TBN and be a part of the harvest.